what are the interventions that we 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 are introducing it is customs cooperation between the, the customs of the different countries digitizing the corridor introducing digital operations at the corridor establishing one stop border post that when a, a truck is moving say from abidjan it gets to elubo it can only stop at the Cote d'Ivoire side. When it gets to the Ghana side, it should just proceed. When it reaches uh, Afla or, or uh, Akanu, Akanu, that side, it should stop only on the Ghana side, do the clearance. And then when it reaches the Togo side, it should proceed. And on the Togo-Benin border, it should stop only on the Togo side. And when it crosses to Benin, it just proceeds. When it gets to um, uh, the Benin-Nigeria border, it should only stop at the Benin for clearance, and when it gets to Nigeria, it just goes on to... So that is the operation of the one-stop border post. We would also propose that we introduce, and, and this is working elsewhere in the continent, 24-hour border operation. 24-hour. Anytime a truck stands up at the border, it shouldn't wait until tomorrow morning. Uh, the economy should not sleep, the economy should work 24 hours. So that is the, the answer I can give you for flawless movement of goods across our borders. I can tell you that what I have just narrated is working in Eastern Africa. The corridor from Mombasa to Kigali, that's how the goods are moving. It, it, it used to take um, uh, nearly a month to move from, uh, let me give you the example of um, uh, Mombasa to Kampala, it's 1,200 kilometers. Uh, it used to take anywhere between 21 days, three weeks to four weeks to move a cargo truck from Mombasa, 1,200 kilometers. Today it's down to four days. What did we do? The things I'm telling you about. We removed unnecessary checkpoints along the corridor. Um, we removed the um, uh, you know, we, we established a one stop border post. We uh, instituted a 24 hour operation at the border. So, cargo movement is, is flawless. That is what we want to replicate through the continent. Now, if we were not ready, we would not have negotiated this. We were ready in 1963. We were ready. But then we did not say, at that time in 1963, there were still residual political issues. The residual political issues then were, were that there were still uh, countries that were under colonialism. And we needed to have the entire continent liberated before we can turn to uh, address our economic uh, challenges. So, with the liberation of South Africa in 1990, 1994, I think, when the first government came in. So now we, the entire continent is, uh, you all know Guinea-Bissau, there were challenges there, and uh, Guinea-Bissau became a different thing in 1975, and, and then Angola, and then, uh, uh, no, it was Mozambique, and then uh, Namibia, and then, of course, South Africa, the last one. So at the time that you need to, when you read the history of Africa, so it says at the time that um, the heads of state met, they said we cannot now focus on the economy when parts of Africa are still colonized. Therefore, let us pass, get rid of the colonial administrations, and then we can now begin to focus on the, on the economic. And so that is now why uh, the heads of state in 20, uh, 2010, said there must be a program to boost intra-Africa trade. That was 2010. In 2012, in January, during their meeting, 18th session of the assembly, they said, first track the establishment of a continental free trade area by 2017, in order to support the boosting of intra-Africa trade. So within, um, um, that was 2012, so when the negotiations kicked off in 2015, uh, were launched in 2015, but actual negotiations started around January 20, uh, February 20, uh, 2017. 
So within a year, by March 2018, we had done the main instrument, which is the agreement establishing the FCFTA. Are we ready? I believe that we are ready. Why? Because the products are there, the traders are there, the business community is there, and we have to trade. If you want to know whether we are ready, is to go and visit Elubo, go and visit Aflao, go and visit Bolga, go and visit the border of um, uh, Benin and Nigeria, go and visit the border of Kenya and Uganda, Rwanda and DRC, uh, Uganda and Rwanda, and um, the border between Tanzania and Rwanda, uh, and, and so on, all the borders, Tanzan Zambia, Tanzania, uh, uh, then Zambia, uh, DRC, Peter was there, it's called the Kasumbalesa, busy, very busy. What are those people busy doing at the border? They are trading. What are they trading? They are trading, some of what they are trading are our products. Some of the things that they are trading are products from elsewhere. So when you ask, are we, are we ready? I believe that we are ready. From the perspective of uh, such university college, there are two principles that uh, we hold very close to our hearts. My one is that leadership is the cause. All other things are effect. So we believe that you know leaders are there to inspire us to do what is good. And that uh, so long as we get our leadership priorities right, we'll be on the right course to uh, success and, uh, and prosperity. We need to work on that. I think he has spoken a lot about about the, the historical developments that have brought us where we are. I don't want to go into that. But the second principle that is we highly uh, evaluate is the issue of all coming on board. You know, after, it's so critical to our uh, progress, our success as, a, as nations, as, a, as continents, that we cannot leave it in the hands of uh, 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 countries alone. You know, the after secretariat, the AU, they are doing a lot. They are putting a lot of effort, but we all have to get on board. The media will have to get on board. Tertiary edu uh, educational institutions will have to get on board. Business people will have to get on board. It's it all about, about what are we producing for as far as uh, the, uh, the vehicle producing, producing uh, uh, lines that we have set up, is it enough to just set them up or by your, have others set them up and we making no contribution? No. How do we do that? Are we ready? Yes, we can only be ready when we all get on board in doing our part. We from Salt uh, University College, we believe that you know, we, if we can galvanize the involvement of diplomas, bring them together with businessmen and then academia, We'll be making our contribution to that general effort to advance the progress that uh, we are all yearning for. We cannot sit and be waiting for the progress to come to us. In fact, when I was uh, some years ago, when I was working as a director for Africa and regional integration at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, I, I, I remember we made it a particular effort to even involve non governmental organizations, people who could also contribute to, in terms of people-to-people -people contacts, rather than leaving it to the, the, in the hands of civil servants, public servants, and law. No, there, are, there is a lot that people have there. He talked about the market women, the people are on the, uh, at the various borders. They all have roles to play. How do we organize them? How do we help them to play their role? After, it's a must succeed for all of us. And so we must all come on board. Media, we are waiting for you to broadcast this thing. Take the, take the, the, the uh, struggle, as you call it, out there to be able to understand that we have to succeed with after. We, we are too, too eurocentric. We are so looking at what to come from China, what to come from Europe, and how we can, and not thinking about what we can do among ourselves. That is where we are lacking. And that's what after has come to change, you know. 
I think today I've been asked also to say the concluding remarks. So I think uh, all what we are doing today is to sensitize all of us to, to know that, you know, we have in our hands a golden institution after and that we together working together all of us academia uh, uh businessmen corporate organizations the the uh of course the civil service the public services all across they all have root to do which we all come together and dialogue and see how we could advance the uh, the after objectives the after brief further yes we have Today we will understand that we have roles to play and know that we may come to arrive to, to where we want to. And I, I can only sincerely thank the participation of the after secretariat, you know, uh, the secretary general uh, delegating the chief of staff and uh, the chief advisor to come and uh, participate in this launch. It's a, a very big demonstration of their willingness and readiness to support what we are doing we also want to thank the uh, and uh, please carry our our thanksgiving to the secretary general we really appreciate you know and uh, hopefully uh, in 2025 on march 4th on may 4th 2025